The 530th edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head on over to Cut.com, that's K-U-T-T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick for a chance to win 100 times your entry in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. And finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month. Start making smarter bets today. Howdy ho, DeGenerinos! Back in your ear holes and eye holes, episode 530 of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. So this one's going out to Golden Pineapple, one of our YouTube viewers, friends, the Golden Pineapple, excuse me, who uh, was praising my co-host, but uh, calling him an absolute beast. But really, the Golden Pineapple is the one who who put, put it all out on the line here. He took a plus 1,000 parlay on regional picks of Gumby. My co-host had given out and it hit. So he's uh, very happy about that. And if you're listening, watching, you should be happy too, because we're covering, uh, it's Monday, so we're covering a regional event for you, LFA 180. So anyway, this goes out to Golden Pineapple. I am not the Golden Pineapple. I am Jeff Chalks Fox, one of your hosts here. Uh, as I said, we're doing LFA 180. And then we're going to give you some bonus content tomorrow. We're going to do a Cage Warriors fight card. Because that's what the people have demanded. I've crunch the, the data you people love lfa and cage warriors and octagon so we shall continue covering as long as you are subscribing and watching on youtube and on uh on whatever podcast catcher you choose so let's bring in the man of the hour hopefully this won't be an hour long but the man who has all the goods for lfa and every regional promotion hopefully he's going to toot his horn a little bit about this past week and it's daniel gummy reeland hello I was actually getting ready to toot the golden pineapple horn. Uh, yes, like go ahead. I know, I know we didn't co- coordinate this at all uh, because uh, I was actually going to tell you to dedicate the episode to him. Because yep. what kind of maniac hears me <laughs> giving out dogs? And don't get me wrong, I love giving out dogs, but maybe that's the problem. Here's me give out three yep. straight underdogs on a card. And he's like, "Let's parlay all those bad boys together uh, and gets ten to one in every single one of them hit." That's that's a maniac DGen move. Uh, and yep. I mean, like if I had the, the sound you. effects, yeah, I, I, if I had the sound effects from the the, the Bit Bosses show, we would have given yep. that a uh, real men of DGen's moment for uh, the Golden Pineapple. We would have had gunshots last episode, and we would have had that too. So, <laughs> Gummies you know, wants you know, us a soundboard. <laughs> wants us to increase our our budget and uh, get a soundboard. Um, all right, so that was Octagon. That's the one that you picked all the dogs in, right? So you did good with Octagon. Yeah, so I gave uh, I, we did a five fight preview on Octagon. I gave four underdogs, three of them hit, uh, one of them looked terrible. Uh, and then I picked the favorite in the main event and he hit too. So that was uh, four in one night. Uh, overall cashed out at like plus three and a half units or something like that. Uh, LFA was a little bit worse, mostly because one of the fights I liked the odds on best dropped off. Uh, the ladies' fight that was on that card that we broke down, so it wound mm-hmm. up only being four. All really wide odds. So I went two and two, but that was like down a unit and a half or so. So on the on the weekend in total, uh, that was six and three and up about two units. So uh, overall, yeah. Up, yeah. And we're up to about uh, almost 16 units up on the year, too. So uh, Unreal. Yeah, the regional MMA, man. <laughs> so it's worth, I take it it's worth doing the work then. Is that what's doing? Is that what you think is is uh m- making you hit at such a high rate that you actually know what you're doing and and maybe a lot of these bookies or people betting on these fights don't really know they're just casual yeah i, th- I think the the biggest piece here and, and this goes for any regional promotion you could talk about the highest to high or the lowest to low mm-hmm. is that like just on regional promotions you have to imagine the people who set the lines on these things are not up all night watching fights from ben parish you know what I mean? Like we're, we're going to talk about big tuna in a second. They're not up watching big tuna fights all night. Uh, yeah. And he's further up the card than some of the people they're giving us lines on. They're not watching these guys. They're not familiar with these guys. They don't know anything about them other than their record and who they've fought before. And my guess is based on where I've seen most of these lines get set, they set them basically based on the tapology prediction survey that they have at the bottom. And so like, 
if that's what they're setting him on, and I think a lot of those guys on Tapology, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, are probably doing it based on record and who they fought to. If, if that's what they're setting the lines on, then there are obviously wild margins for errors, right? Because like mm-hmm. that's a that that's a way you can handicap some things, but you can't handicap all of them, especially like if we're talking about the Brazilian regional scene or the Czech regional scene. Like th- those are places where if you get a little bit of film, you can see that there are some wild discrepancies based on their record and actual skill level. Yeah, you, you see some of these opponents uh, that people have beaten. You're like, whoa, they're wearing like a UFC. They fought grandma. And, uh, they fought grandmas. <laughs> yeah, and like a grandma, exactly. The grandma. Um, yeah, so we, um, well, I've done kind of, I, I've done the uh, the paperwork part of it. And Gumby's done the the uh, eyeballs, boots on the ground work uh, to, to get you ready for this LFA card. And uh, he's going to win us money, right? We don't know the odds though, correct? Uh, no, we don't. But as I said, I, I can usually get pretty darn close on a lot of these, uh, with the exception of that time I badly messed up Andy Clamp and thought he'd be a favorite and wound up getting him at a two to one dog price. <laughs> and he came through as well. Of the course, key piece of there. Course. He came through and hit. I wouldn't I wouldn't bring him back. I wouldn't bring him back up if he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Are are you this good with uh NCAA tournament as well, Gumby? I so this is this is the year I've watched the least amount of college basketball in my whole life. Um, you know, as yeah. you know, I'm a Gonzaga fan. They were a little bit down this year. They didn't have a lot of guys who've been on their team for a while. Like two of their better players are transfers. It's little little Nembard, Andrew Nembard's yeah. little brother. Yep. And uh <laughs> yeah, Canadian. And Graham Ike, who came from like Montana or something. Wyoming. He played for Wyoming first. So like a couple of transfer guys wasn't super interested in them as a team. So I just watched less this year. I'm in the 91st percentile in all brackets on ESPN. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, you know Zaga's into the sweet 16, right? Bingo. Yeah. yeah. What, I mean, what could yeah. be better than that? Everything's coming up Millhouse for Gumby. Um, all right. So as I said, we're doing LFA 180 and we're doing Cage Wars. Then next week, the week after this, boy, oh boy, it's packed with, with the non-UFC fight cards, isn't it? We got PFL. We got Cage Wars. We got LFA. We got KSW. It's going to be we're and in a you business. Know how I, and you know how I hate PFL? Uh, because yes. now they're Bellator and you know, I yes. hate Bellator. they got the stink um, on them. Yeah. And, and so, and they actually have a really great card. I feel like you could do two episodes on PFL if you really wanted to, because like even the prelims rule on that fight card. PFL one, uh, they're kicking off the new season. Yeah. Well, they've got a, an infusion of uh, new talent, I guess. Right. There's mm-hmm. a mixture of Bellator fighters mixed in with the PFL guys. So, and UFC fighters, Talia yep. Santos is fighting. Right. That's uh, right. Next yeah. Week. Yeah, yeah, Gumby's been uh, praising PFL a bit in the uh, in the Discord. So uh, get in the Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. All right, before we jump in, I'm going to tell you about um, one of our sponsors, two of our sponsors, how about? And then we will uh, give you some picks without interrupting. First, Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Peer-to-peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. And they have tons of fun social features that give it the feel of a betting social network. Cut offers lower, big, and fully customizable odds. Create your own bets. Cut handles the payment side of things so you never have to chase anyone down for money, which is very important. That's probably the worst part of doing playing fantasy sports. Um, Social features include group chats, betting leaderboards, head head history, user profiles, fan groups, and more. And the rewards are you get your cash back every single time you bet against your friends or other users. I think the main reward is not having to chase your debit friends for, for uh, their entry fee. Um, so get on cut, check out the um, custom SGPN um, bets that we put up there. Uh, download cut today in the app store or over at cut.com. That's K U T T.com. And of course, use the promo code SGPN for 10% deposit, a bonus. Underdog Fantasy, you want more bonuses? Underdog Fantasy's got them for you, too. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. All you got to do is pick between two and five players in any sport you want. Pick what stat of theirs is going to go higher or lower uh, based on what Underdog has has it set at. And then you can win 100 times your money in one single night. Boom. Within a couple hours. If all that sounds good, and why would it not? Sign up today with promo code MMASGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks. As well as, as well as an instant pick them special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with my promo code, Gummy's promo code, our promo code, MMASGPN, to get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks. 
as well as an instant pick em special. You must be 18 or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concern with your play. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. All right, let's get into LFA as I will tell you the deets. LFA 180 Fernandez versus Siguera. It is going down Friday, 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 9 p.m. Eastern, which is good. We won't run up against the UFC or, or the other regional event we're going to do tomorrow. On UFC Fight Pass, another plus. You don't have to uh, search around uh, on dodgy websites for their feed. Uh, it's in the Broadbent Arena in Louisville, Kentucky, in a cage, 14 bouts. We're going to do, you said, all six of the main card ones. Is that correct? Yep. All right. Prelims. Anything interesting on the prelims? There's someone named uh, Alvi on it from Alvi's uh, part of the world. Is that one of his many children? I don't, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I will shout out. Naira rep is fighting. Um, I, I've been high on Naira rep for a while. Uh, she wound up running into the buzzsaw that is now champion Shannon Clark in her last fight. Um, yeah. so like she, she took a step back, but I think she's probably one of the better regional fighters at that weight class, especially being that her record doesn't look really great. I think she could totally rattle off like three or four wins that we could see on contender series in like 2025. All right. There you go. There you go. Okay. Um, let's start things off with main card. As I said, did I tell you the start time? 9 PM. Yep. Um, all right. Yeah, you got main it. card is probably what main card is probably what midnight, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, it's gonna. This is gonna be late. <laughs> it's gonna be a late night, but that's okay. All the degens in the Discord don't care. A familiar name, um, in this card. Actually, no. This is the other parish, isn't it? No, this is this is the correct parish. Ben. This parish, is Big Tuna. Right? Yeah, that's Big Tuna, right? His brother's on the card next, right? Is I assume it's his brother. I don't know if that's his brother or not. They they're the same they age, look exactly so they have to be. They, oh, oh, then they'd have to be twins. The yeah, I'm pretty sure they're both thirty-one. Wow. All right. Ben, big tuna parish versus Alec Lorenz. This is three five-minute rounds at 205 pounds. Both of these gentlemen are from the United States of America. Lorenz is three and one with three knockouts. He's been knocked out one time, so he owes his rounds, obviously. One known LFA. He's won two straight fights. He's not lost a fight since October of 2021. Five years younger than Parrish, three inches taller. Big tuna parish. We've spoken of him before. He's six and four, two knockouts, four submissions. He's been knocked out twice, submitted once. He owes his rounds as well. 0-1 in LFA, 1-3 over his last four, 2-4 and four over his last six, 1 his last fight via TKO, 1-1 one one in Bellator, was regional champion, used to fight down at middleweight. All right, let her rip. I'm going to find out about this other Parrish guy. All right, so Ben Parrish, Big Tuna, uh, largely busted onto the scene with a wild knockout of Christian Edwards, who is largely seen as this like hot prospect on Bellator's scene. And uh, Ben Parrish, he's a chunky guy. Uh, despite being a light heavyweight, he's still a chunky guy. Uh, he's or maybe loose chunky, maybe, maybe both somehow. Um, but like Ben Parrish, not really a menacing looking dude. And he went out there and knocked out Christian Edwards. Cause this is the thing about Ben Parrish. He's a big left hand for the most part and nothing else. Um, his wrestling defense isn't great. Uh, his striking defense isn't stellar. Uh, his footworks are right. That, that's kind of how he gets the power underneath him, but like, he's got big hands and that's pretty much it. And I think he's going to come in here as a big dog because since that knockout of Christian Edwards, his record looks atrocious, like truly bad um, since then. And Alik Lorenz is a guy who I think LFA is trying to hype up. Like, I think they really like him. He's won three in a row. Uh, he, he's just come to the LFA and he's like, he looks like you want a light heavyweight prospect to look, right? Like he's big, broad shoulders. But here's the problem. I'm going to go with Ben Parrish here. I th of think course he's going to be a plus three. Yeah, of course I'm going with Big Tuna. I think he's going to be like a plus 300 dog, probably, because of the looks, because of the resume, because of everything. But the thing about Alik Lorenz is, first of all, I don't know if he's going to shoot the takedowns. Um, and if he did, he'd probably have a pretty easy time. But I don't think he's going to shoot the takedowns. Instead, I think he's going to go in there and brawl. And while he's a much better technical striker than Ben Parrish is, there are some issues with his defensive striking. Like he has a little bit of issues when it comes to making sure that he covers back up his chin after he throws combinations. And with that being said, I think Ben Parrish is the worst kind of guy to fight if you're going to get sloppy and brawl at any point in time. I think Ben Parrish has the ability to turn that off. So if he comes in at three plus 300, give me Pen Ben Parrish for the weird fat guy knockout. Oh, weird fat guy knockout. Could that be a title of the episode, Gumby? It's a pretty good title, don't you think? <laughs> 
I love weird. It. I'm typing it down. Weird fat guy knockout. All right, <laughs> we're going to the other parish. Derek Parish. He was born a month later. Dustin than Parrish? Ben Parish. So Dustin, yes, Dustin, Dustin Parish was so either it was a really horrible pregnancy. I mean labor. And she was in labor <laughs> for a month between twins, or they're not related, or maybe they're cousins. I don't know. I think they might be from different parts of the well, Indiana and Kentucky or I don't know. Inconclusive is my answer. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> they look so much like their pictures are similar too, though. That's the thing. Have have you had Big Tuna on your podcast before? I feel like you have. I haven't. Nah. Well, have them on and find out what, what's going on here. Or maybe we'll hear on the broadcast what's going on. All right. Uh, of course, we're talking about Dustin Parrish. He's a welterweight. He is from the United States of America versus Victor Valenzuela. He's not from Valenzuela. He's from Chile. Um, all right. His name is Psychosis, like the wrestler, the masked luchador. He is 10 and 3. This would be Valenzuela. Four knockouts, two submissions. He's been knocked out once, submitted once. This is his LFA debut. He's won four straight fights and five of six. Three straight wins have come via finish. He's not lost since July of 2021. This is uh, he made his, his debut in professional MMA in 2013. Two years younger than Parrish. Parrish, 10, 4, and 1. Three knockouts, five submissions. He's been knocked out twice. This is his LFA debut as well. Two straight wins. Four of his last five have come via win. All of all of his wins and the loss came have come via finish over that span. He's not lost since October 2020. Used to fight down at lightweight and up at middleweight. 2014 Pro MMA debut, two-inch tight over Valence Wells. So a couple guys more than a decade into the game are getting their shot at uh, the big regional scene here. Yeah, I'm going to say that Valenzuela will wind up being a pretty large favorite here. We'll say like negative 225 or something like that. We'll get, you know, plus 200 on the return for Parrish. Uh, and I'm going to go with the favorite on this one. I, I think Ooh. Parrish Parrish has got kind of like a nice double leg. And if you watch like some of his fights, he finishes it with kind of ease. But I think that's kind of a worrisome fact because I, I don't really know what would happen if he got stuffed. And it's a big step up in level of competition here against Valenzuela. Um, so like to go from, you know, like easily taking people down to having to struggle for his takedowns, I think it's going to be a problem for him. Cause Valenzuela is, is actually pretty good at shoot uh, stuff and takedowns. He fought uh, Shinzo Anzai in his last fight, uh, who you might remember from his like short stint in the UFC. Um, yep. He had like a, a wrestling background uh, fighting out of Japan and uh, Valenzuela like stuffed every single one of his takedowns and forced him to box with him and, and just pieced him up on the feet. Valenzuela is really, really fast with the hands. He's like, um, he, he's fought some like pure striking matches before. I can't remember if they were like Muay Thai or, or kickboxing or boxing, but like I know he's he's taken that route as well. Um, so I think he's going to be way sharper on the feet, and I think he just stuffed the takedowns here. Parrish looks kind of like he's worried about getting hit in a lot of his fights. Um, up until he hits his double leg. So, like, if he can't hit the double leg and he gets forced back to the feet, I think Valenzuela is going to have his way. So, yeah, give me Valenzuela. Probably a decent-sized favorite here, but, you know, probably still value there on him. I hope you. I, I, I was hoping you would do a Parish Parish um, parlay. Brothers from other mothers, but no, not the case here. Sad. Nope. Hey. He's under obligated. He's obligated to pick winners, so he can't just make funny parlays for for my sake. All right, for my humor, uh, my entertainment. He's he's here for you, fans. All right, let's move down, down, down to bantamweights. Angelo Robles, Robles. There's a baseball player named that, isn't there? He plays for Washington. Victor Robles, oh, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Victor yeah. Robles. Yeah. Used to, yeah, Robles. Right. Angelo Robles. That's what I meant to say. Um, the baseball player didn't pan out. He was, I think I might've had him at one point. Cause I thought he might, you know, be a, be worth something in fantasy, but no, he's fighting a Israeli Kibeti Gordon. And I told you the weight class. I told you we're doing three, five minute rounds. Now I will tell you about the fighters. Gordon KG is a nickname stolen from Kevin Garnett. He's five and one with one knockout, two submissions. He's been knocked out once. Oh, one in LFA. He did win his last fight. He's fight down at flyweight and up at featherweight five years younger than Robles. Robles, Robles, Tiger. You can just call him Tiger. That's easier, right? He's 3-0 and with two submissions. This is his LFA debut, so he's going to step up right away early in his career. Used to fight at featherweight, and that's all I got on him. Do you have much on this gentleman? He's only fought three times professionally. Yeah, he, he comes from a Golden Glove boxing background. Like, he won Golden Gloves in Indiana, and then in addition Excellent. to that... I do think he has some wrestling in his background too, although uh, I didn't I didn't dig too deep. But it, it looks like based on the way he competes, he does. Um, he threw. He's a an O'Day Osborne, maybe then. Mm, nah, I mean I think he, I, I think he pref 
Yeah, but he prefers to do jujitsu <laughs> in this case. Robles does, uh, whereas Ode would rather strike. Um, he, he somebody caught his kick in like I want to say it was his first second fight um and granted he's only had like three of them total but they got his skin his first or a second but he did was he just l- leaped forward did a front roll and grabbed a knee bar uh <laughs> and that to me is insane levels of jujitsu i think he's yeah. one of those guys who people is, are just going to be like jacked up about uh and, and so you're going to see big odds on him I'm going to fade him despite the fact that I just said all those nice things about him. Uh, I think he's going to be like a negative 200, maybe negative 220 favorite. Gordon, like plus 175, plus 180. And I really like what I've seen out of Kid that you like. If somebody's going to try to get you a jujitsu and going to try to get you with wrestling, that's exactly the kind of game plan you want to go without um, is to throw those step in knees and to throw things like that. Uh, on top of all of that, he also, I mean, his hands are super fast. Um, he cheats a little bit, which I kind of like. He, uh, he he went to go get taken down Cameron a times on. and grabbed the fence like more blatantly than I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> oh, no, actually, the funny thing is he's uh, he's Severino's training partner, the guy who just bit uh, Lima. Oh. They train together. Um, so, oh, yeah. Oh, dear perfect combination um so, so yeah. he cheats a little bit in uh but the, but the thing is is that like he uses that cheating to scramble well uh and i think that those scrambles are going to help him with robles i think he stays out of submissions i think he looks way better on the feet so i'm going to say it like plus 175 plus 180 give me gordon that's what we want to see hopefully two big dogs out of the first three hopefully when the odds drop there will be big dogs and Hopefully they both hit. Well, they both will hit. It's Gumby we're talking about here. All right. With all this money we're going to win, thanks to Gumby, you can take some of it. Not a lot, but some of it you can take to game time. You don't need a lot because game time is the the place for last minute ticket deals. So deal is the key word there. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. You get images of your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CFBX for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CFBX for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, here's some more guaranteed winners for you. Gumby's giving you six this time instead of the usual three, so you're getting a bonus, a bonus winning pick for you. So, um, or Gumby's giving himself some more room to to have have a loss here or there. Uh, we're moving up to featherweights lance lawrence usa landry ward usa uh definitely a couple of united states style names and a united states style nickname here for ward the lone star kid he's eight and two with three knockouts never been finished in a fight one and one in lfa three and one over his last four including losing his last fight he's fight at lightweight three years younger than lawrence who is the tornado seven and four one knockout five submissions never been finished in a fight this is his LFA debut. Got a lot of people debuting on this here card or the main part of the card. Uh, he's on win-loss win over his last three, two and four over his last six, which does not sound so hot. Uh, used to fight at lightweight. All right, lay it down for us. So Ward's going to be a big favorite here. I'm This This is the line I'm the most confident in saying it is going to be there. Um, he was in main events recently for LFA. Like You might remember we did a, a card like a couple of months ago and he was main eventing. Uh, it didn't go well for him uh, in that fight. And he he's kind of had some troubles. He's been stumbling as of late. And it seems like LFA is doing him a favor, bringing him in here at 7-4 guy from outside of the promotion to, to kind of get him back on the right track. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, like maybe they're trying to get him back on the right track or maybe this guy is much better than his record suggests. And when I watched him, I, I don't think so. Uh, my, my biggest issue is that like, he seems not to get full extension on his strikes. Like it, it seems like he's, he's like fighting all up in close, despite the fact that he's got a pretty long reach. And I think some of that is because he really likes to do jujitsu and he really looks good with his grappling. Cause every single time I've seen somebody shoot a takedown on him, I don't know if he has the worst takedown defense. I've ever seen, or if he's just so pumped that somebody wants to be on the ground with him that he just lets it happen. Um, but like pretty much every time he's fought, that's what I've seen. It's like somebody shoots a takedown, and he's like, Oh no, don't do that. Uh, and then winds up throwing up arm bars nonstop for the next five minutes. And so I think the problem for him in this fight is Landry Ward doesn't want this fight on the ground. Landry Ward very much just wants to have an absolute slobber knocker of a boxing match. And with Lawrence, Lawrence is kind of a tall guy for the division. 
Ward is even, you know, is, is matches his size and matches his length. And I think that's going to be a problem for Lawrence being that he doesn't get full extension on his punches and stuff like that. And then in addition to that, Ward, as you mentioned, so durable, like he got the absolute crap kicked out of him in one of his recent fights. And that dude just kept trying to win the fight. So like, I think here against Lawrence, he's going to be the grittier guy. He's going to be the pace pusher. He's going to be the guy with the better striking. And he's just going to choose not to go to the ground, which is where Lawrence wants to fight. So even, even though he'll probably come in right around mid negative two hundreds, I'll still take Landry Ward. here. All right. Landry Ward is the pick. That is a Texas style name too, right? Landry Cowboys. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm almost right. positive. He's probably named after Tom Landry. <laughs> yeah, more than you would think more than likely. All right. Uh, co main event time. It's a lightweight fight. Keegan Agnew, USA, Richie Miranda, United States of America as well. Three five-minute rounds at 155 pounds. And I'm going to tell you about Miranda first. El Machete. I have no idea what that translates to, but that's what his nickname is. Uh, he's 7-1, four knockouts, two submissions. Never been finished in a fight. 4-1 uh, in LFA. Won his last fight via TKO versus Agnew, the violent hippie. What a great nickname, Gumby. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> It is one of the best you're going to get. Uh, we got some really good ones on this card. The Violent Hippie, uh, Big Tuna, good nicknames, quality. Uh, the Violent Hippie is six and one, two knockouts, two submissions, never been finished in a fight. This is his LFA debut. He did win his last fight. That was back in March of 2023. He's not lost since October of 2022. Was a regional champion and he's three inches taller than the Machete. Oh, that's what it translates to. I get it now. Uh, Miranda, go ahead. So I'm uh, I'm going to say Richie Miranda is going to come in here negative 300, negative 350. This is a guy who's been on the tip of a lot of people's tongues when they're talking about who's going to the UFC next from the lightweight division. I'd be shocked if he wasn't on Contender Series come fall. Um, but I will say if he comes in at negative 300 or negative 350 here, it's probably just a pass spot for me. I think he's going to win the fight. He's going to be my pick to win. But I actually think Keegan Agnew is better than the odds will probably list him at here. Um I don't love everything about his striking. Like sometimes it seems like he's throwing punches. He's almost the opposite of Lance Lawrence. He throws punches and like extends so far. And then like his arms, like don't retreat to his face right away. They just kind of like stay out there. Like he's trying to show you how hard he hit somebody or like he's doing a punching machine. Uh, but whatever it is, it, he, he's, he's, accurate with his punches he has great pace um he fought austin hubbard to a decision and had some really great moments in the fight with austin hubbard too the problem is is he's just fighting a guy who's got a lot of power in richie miranda and uh, has a lot of power in both the hands and the grappling right like i think richie miranda can just plow through you with takedowns he's got great top positioning you know he's like just a guy who's got like a very complete game in my opinion um which is why people are talking about him going to the ufc I think Agnew tired in that that Austin Hubbard fight, and Miranda can sort of match that pace. So I'm going to pick Miranda, but with like some of the things I've seen from Agnew that are pretty quality. Like if it does come in at negative 350, this, this is like a potential parlay buster. So maybe stay away from just like adding him to all your parlays at a big number like that. Be cool if the violent hippie could make a run, though, wouldn't it, Gumby? With that nickname, <laughs> we need yeah, a violent I mean, hippie we need, run here. We we need more more unique nicknames. We do. We do definitely not uh, not just initial ones. All right, you also need more Hall of Fame bets in your life. You win bigger by betting smarter. This NBA season with Hall of Fame bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea in the Hall of Fame bets revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot, and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over thirty thousand users researching with Hall of Fame bets. Craft from intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. All right, we did the LFA research for you. Now you're gonna, we're going to do the winning. Actually, you're going to do the winning. The fighters are going to do the winning, and then we're going to cash our, our winning tickets. Okay, fine. Enough rambling. Let's get to the main event. No title fight. Just a flyweight fight, three five minute rounds. Is this a weaker LFA card with no title fight, or, or do you still like the card up and down? 
they they've been doing more cards with non-title fights as headliners yeah. lately. And if I'm not mistaken, Sikiera Sikiera is coming off of a title fight with Cody Davis. Yeah. So like it's you know they're like title level fighters. Maybe this is a number yeah. one contender fight, but they've been doing more like that anyway as they expand their uh, their fight card offerings. Yep. It's, I guess it's hard to do a title fight every week. They pretty much have an event almost every week at this point. So um, we're not sneezing at it. Uh, Kevin Fernandez is one of the combatants in the main event. Uh, he is from the United States versus Igor, Igor excuse me, Siguera from Brazil. Uh, Siguera, the golden boy. We just had a golden boy fight in the UFC this past weekend. The results were okay. Um, didn't look so hot, though. Uh, let's see how Siguera does. I'll uh, we'll tell you his resume first. Nine and two, three knockouts, four submissions. He's been knocked out once, submitted once, so he needs to go the distance in some of his losses, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, one in LFA. That was a title fight, I believe Gumby said. A three and one over his last four. He got TKO'd in his last fight. That that they are a title fight, and he was a regional champion before the LFA adventure. Fernandez Lil Dragon. Seven and one, one knockout, four submissions. Never been finished in a fight. Five and one LFA. He's won four straight, all via finish. Uh, five years younger than Siguera, an inch taller, and he also is two and zero as a pro kickboxer. Over to you. So I think Fernandez, slight favorite here, maybe like negative one thirty five, negative one forty five, probably like plus one twenty for Sikierda. Uh, And I'm going to go with Fernandez here. Uh, I think the biggest difference maker here is if you watch Igor's last fight with Cody Davis, and he's taking some time off on this because uh, Cody Davis, if I'm not mistaken, is no longer even the flyweight champ at this point. So uh, you know that that's uh, that that's been a little bit of while since we've seen. Igor in in that fight his biggest issue was just not being able to handle Cody Davis in the clinch and I don't just mean from a wrestling perspective because Cody Davis is very good in the clinch from the wrestling perspective but anytime they tied up Cody Davis got the better of exchanges he landed some elbows he landed some body shots and that's actually where Kevin Fernandez is his absolute best in my opinion is he he likes the the, the tie plum he likes working elbows in there from up close he works the body he throws knees like he just wants you in the clinch and yeah, he's got some takedowns too. And I think he could probably capitalize on those, but even if this fight just like clashes into a clinch all the time, he's going to be the one landing the big shots and probably tiring Igor Siquiera out. So I'm going to go with Kevin Fernandez, probably slight favorite, but I think probably a, a ton of value if he's only that. All right, let's recap this here stuff. And then we'll get out of your, your orifices and back in them tomorrow with another uh, regional event. All right. Gumby's got, Fernandez, he's got Miranda, he's got Ward, he's got Gordon, he's got Valenzuela, he's got Parrish, the big tuna variety of Parrish, correct? I got all that? That's correct. Yeah, you got it. Wow, I did my, jo I did my job. Fantastic. All right. Uh, if you want more LFA talk, more big tuna talk, more talk of uh, all things MMA, it would be at the our Discord, Sports Gambling, uh, sports gambling podcast com slash discard. I've only said that every episode and I'm stumbling over it now. Uh, Twitter is SGPN MMA. He's at Gumby Vreeland. I'm a Jeff Fox writer. Uh, you can find me there on Instagram as well. Where else can you find me? You can find me at my Substack, moneymma.substack.com. Get in there for all my MMA writings and stat stuff I do. And perhaps more importantly, you can win stuff for free. I run a weekly UFC pick em, which is up and running again for this weekend's UFC Atlantic City. So get in there. Gumby's got the Top Turtle MMA podcast. Sometimes he has LFA people on it. Uh, often he has UFC people on it. Who was on it this week? Uh, we're talking to Kyle the Monster Nelson before he fights at UFC yes, Atlantic Canadian. City. And then we are talking to the legend of the Ultimate Fighter, I think 11. Uh, Court the Crusher McGee is on the show. Oh, yes. And he's not a retired fighter. He is still, does he have a fight scheduled? He's got a fight for April, April 6th, I think it is. He's fighting Alex Morano. Oh, yes. Fantastic. All right. So listen to the Top Turtle MMA podcast for sure. Uh, YouTube, Gumby has been yelling at you the past few shows, but uh, subscribers are still ticking up, but we still get more viewers than subscribers. So just hit the subscribe button with all your accounts, all your burner accounts. Uh, borrow, quote unquote, borrow uh, family members or household members' uh, devices. Make sure they subscribe as well. They don't even have to watch your videos. It would help if they did, but they don't have to. Make sure you subscribe there. Um, and what else can you do? Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com, of course. Read all our articles, uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash store. Get all our merch. Get a cool SGP hat like I have on right now. And sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon so we can uh, crush the corporate gambling overlords. They do not rule us. All right, Gumby, take us out of here, and we'll be back tomorrow. 
All right, I'm David Gooby Freeland. He's the violent hippie Jeff Fox, and we will see you on uh, tomorrow.